We live in a world where criticism is abundant. It's so instilled in our social upbringing that people often turn to criticism at the drop of a hat. We are constantly being evaluated by our teachers at school. We are regularly getting feedback from our managers at work. Film reviewers often say bad things about the films they watch. Call it what you will. But what is the point of all this criticism? Purpose of criticism. I suppose the reason people criticize is to try to get someone or some group to change. This can be beneficial. For example, if a government implements a new policy that makes it harder for young people to get an education, then yes, criticism of the policy would be appropriate because the policy is negatively affecting a large number of youth. Criticism can also be used to bring about improvement. A teacher who evaluates a child's short story is trying to help that child become a better writer. Although in this situation, one could argue that the teacher's criticism is simply an opinion and therefore subjective, so may not actually help the child. Some examples of people who were initially criticized but went on to become quite successful include Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor because he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Charles Darwin was considered by his teachers and his father a very ordinary boy, rather below the common standard of intellect. Socrates was called an immoral corrupter of youth. Despite this, he went on teaching, but was eventually forced to poison himself. Robert Sternberg, an American psychologist, was told by his introductory psychology professor that there was already a famous Sternberg in psychology, and it was obvious there would not be another. Thomas Edison was told by his teachers that he was too stupid to learn anything. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her job as a TV reporter because she was unfit for TV. Fred Astaire was criticized by the testing director at MGM who noted that Astaire can't act, can't sing, slightly bald, can dance a little. I guess what these examples should tell us is that people's opinions should be taken with a grain of salt. I know, easier said than done. Criticism for criticism's sake. In the last 10 years or so, I've noticed people have become much more willing to criticize openly. It's probably as a result of our social upbringing. For example, I recently told a friend and his wife that I had enrolled my son in a particular kindergarten. Their first response was, oh, we don't like that kindergarten. No reason was given, and I never inquired. Actually, I didn't really care what they thought, as I had heard many good things about the kindergarten. I felt they were just criticizing for the sake of criticizing. I think people feel strong when they give their opinion, even if it hurts others. Another example, when I first became a vegetarian, I would have to let others know at barbecues etc that I don't eat meat. Some people would immediately jump into attack mode and say things like, you know, it's bad for your health, or you can't force me to stop eating meat, plants have feelings too. Now that I'm a bit more mature, I still encounter these people, but I tend to ignore them. Some of my wife's friends are constantly criticizing others, whether it be about the new car they've bought or the new school they've enrolled their child in. They even criticize me for refusing to get a mortgage. I just find it easier not to talk to them anymore. I'm still polite with them, but I don't get involved in any in-depth conversation with them. Why do people criticize? The underlying reason probably comes down to fundamental psychology. People who criticize others are actually talking about themselves. That is, people usually see their own faults in others. It's a defense mechanism that tries to place blame elsewhere. Nobody likes to admit that they are unsuccessful, so instead they make others feel like that they cannot succeed, either by identifying flaws or recommending people not to take a particular course of action. For example, you shouldn't go to university, it's a waste of time. Another reason people criticize is due to external pressures, such as their job. A teacher is forced to evaluate students. If an English teacher only said good things about all of their students and gave them all an A, then the teacher would probably get complaints from either the parents or the faculty. When I was working in a big insurance company, we had monthly feedback sessions. Let's face it, feedback is just a nice word for criticism. My manager, or team leader as they were called, had to say something bad. If they didn't, then they weren't doing their job. So every month, I would prepare myself for some bad stuff to be said about me. Of course, they padded it all with lots of compliments, but I know that they had to write some negative comments too. 
I actually took a peek at her evaluation sheet while she was out of the room answering a phone call. One of the sections stated, list at least three areas where the employee can improve. It wasn't optional, they had to come up with some criticism, or risk losing their own job. When is criticism bad? I've made a list of situations where criticism is unnecessary, unwanted, or just plain wrong. In general, criticising an individual is taken in a negative way. Anything that makes people become negative usually doesn't have a good outcome. Unchangeable characteristics. Criticising someone over their race, sexuality, height, hair colour, accent, or any other physical characteristic is just plain wrong. It will only result in people getting upset and won't actually bring about any positive change. Luckily, most companies nowadays enforce strict anti-discrimination policies that forbid this sort of behaviour. However, in practice, this isn't always effective. Creativity. When somebody writes a story, paints a picture, composes a new song, or designs a new logo, it's usually not appropriate to criticise their work. Art appreciation is very subjective. Although I might not like opera music, I know that many people do. To say that an up-and-coming opera singer sounds like a cat in heat is not nice and will possibly result in that person giving up their passion. I've noticed that film reviewers recently can be very cruel. The actors, directors and producers have put a lot of effort into making a film, so when somebody says Bill's performance was at best pedestrian, this can hurt people. No positive comes out of this. If I don't like a movie, that's fine. I can choose not to watch it. But I'm not going to go around telling everybody that that movie sucks. When I was a boy in grade 4 or 5, I was told by the music teacher that my singing voice was terrible. Now, 25 years later, I'm still scared of singing. She scarred me for life by saying such a cruel thing. I recently saw an interview with Madonna, yes, the all-time best-selling queen of pop. She said that recently some people had got on Twitter and criticised her performance, which made her feel very upset. She said that she puts a lot of work into her performances, hundreds of hours of practice. So for someone to just glibly criticise her, it's not very nice. Personal preferences. People are free to have opinions. However, if somebody buys a new skirt and I don't like it, it's not my place to say, your skirt looks like you pulled it out of the garbage. If somebody likes something, then they like it. I should be happy that they've found something they like. People are always criticising other people's dress sense, or taste in music, or choice of car. Have we got nothing better to say than to criticise other people's personal preferences? I'd like to finish with some guidelines from the Chun Kuk Do. For those of you who don't know, Chun Kuk Do was founded by movie star Chuck Norris. He is a firm believer in not hurting people with his words. I've seen interviews with him where he has refused to say bad things about people. So I think he really practices what he preaches. Of course, everybody makes mistakes, even Chuck. Here are a few of the relevant rules taken from the Code of Honour. I will look for the good in everyone, and make them feel worthwhile. If I have nothing good to say about a person, I will say nothing. I will always be as enthusiastic about the success of others as I am about my own. Oh Chuck, is there anything you cannot do? Anyway, let's all try to say something nice to people instead of trying to think up something bad to say. Yes, I know, our society tries to teach us that we have to constantly evaluate each other and provide feedback all the time. I say, screw that, let's make each other feel happy.